Hi, welcome to my presentation on growing citrus in a container. I'm CJ Anderson. I'm a volunteer with the Master Gardeners of Contra Costa County. UC Master Gardeners are trained volunteers for the University of California Cooperative Extension. We provide research-based horticultural information to the citizens of our county. Here's the outline for today's presentation. I'm gonna give you a little mini botany lesson. We're gonna talk about the benefits of container gardening for citrus. We're gonna go through site selection, the best places to put your citrus tree. We're gonna talk about variety of citrus that do well in containers and some that you might want to have for specific reasons. I will talk to you a little bit about commercial grafted trees. And then I'm gonna walk you through the process of selecting a tree, planting that tree. We'll talk about watering, pruning and fertilizing. We'll discuss some pests and diseases that you should watch out for. And then we'll talk a little bit about frost protection and end it by talking about harvesting. So our basic botany lesson is going to start with the roots. The first year is the most important for development for the roots. Plant roots have several functions. They absorb water and minerals from the soil and they transport them. And they provide support by anchoring the plant in the soil. And the roots also help store food. They are very sensitive to moisture levels, so well-drained well soil is a must. Now the trunk and the shoots, or the branches on the tree, provide support. They transport nutrients in water as well, and they store nutrients. Um, on the branches or the shoot, uh, that's the location of the buds where the leaves and the flowers grow. Leaves are responsible for photosynthesis, which is the process by which green plants produce their own carbohydrates or nutrients and obtain a source of chemical energy. They store food throughout the winter, especially in February, uh, late February and early March. So do not prune during those times. They're doing hard work. Uh, the leaves will remain on the tree for one to two years. And then there will be a heavy leaf drop during the blooming time in the season. And this is absolutely normal. So don't worry about that. Now, as far as the flowers go, this is where reproduction occurs. The flowers are perfect, which means that they have both female and male parts. Uh, they form a new vegetative growth after the winter time. Citrus blooms abundantly, but it will most shed most of them before maturity. Now, most citrus are self-pollinating. A pollinators help, but they are not necessary. You don't need more than one tree of any one variety um, because of this. So you can have one lemon tree and you will get lemons. As far as the fruit go, their job is to disperse the seeds for the survival of the species. And depending on the type of citrus, they produce good fruit three to six years after planting. So you have to be very patient after you get your tree into your container. They should be ready to harvest eight to 16 months after blooming. It depends on the variety. And then their variable harvest, they will have a variable harvest season, two to six months, and also depends on the variety. Now, the benefits of planting citrus in a container are many. Not everybody has space in the yard to plant a tree in the soil. They also will stay smaller. A dwarf tree, if planted in the soil, gets up to eight feet tall, and a semi dwarf gets up to 15 feet tall. They won't get that tall in a container. So it's one of the benefits of putting them in containers. They're more manageable. Now they can be placed also anywhere where you get six or more hours of sun. So you don't have to have them in your yard. You can keep them on your patio. You can put them on a balcony. You can even keep them inside if you have that amount of light. And since you can grow citrus in pots as small as 16 inches, they're easy to move. So you can move them inside in case of frost or hail. Um, and if you have them in a bigger pot, you can put them on wheels to move them. Many people like to move them in and out depending on the season. The last thing about uh, citrus is that they're evergreen. So you'll have beautiful green leaves all year long. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, site selection. And if you are going to grow your tree indoors, you are going to need to find a space that gets at least six hours of sunlight. Um, you might need, if you don't have that through your windows, you might need to uh, buy some lamps that will provide that for your plant and put them on a timer so they get six or more hours of light a day. 
You'll need a tray for draining. If you put your tree on the inside after watering, it will drain out. So you'll need something to catch that. And you should occasionally open windows for a breeze to strengthen the trunk. It's very important. Now, like I said before, uh, they need at least six hours to produce the best fruit. They are sensitive to wind and cold. You need to put them in a sunny location next to the house or inside, like I said. You can put them on wheels um, to protect them during bad weather. And outside, you want to plant them, if you can, against the south facing wall for some extra heat. And once you have a site uh, in your home, in your yard, against your house or inside, you can start the process of thinking what kind of variety you want. Now there are, as you can see, a plethora of varieties to choose from. So you wanna really start by thinking, what kind of citrus do I wanna have on hand? Do I want it for juicing? Do I want it for peeling and eating? Do I wanna make marmalade or jam? So those are some things you should think about. You need to think about what grows well in your microclimate. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that pretty soon, but you want to think about um, what does well. You might want to talk to your neighbors about that, what they're growing, see what's worked well for them. Uh, you can go to your local nursery and they'll recommend some varieties to you. And if you want to grow them indoors, you should check to see which varieties do well inside. Now we're going to talk a little bit about lemons. There are three of them here. The Meyer lemon is a lemon and mandarin uh, orange hybrid. It's smaller than other, other varieties of lemon. They're sweeter as well, and they grow very well on the inside. They're very popular in the Bay Area. Eureka lemons came to America from Italy in the 1800s, and they can bear multiple crops a year once they're mature, so they're a great tree to have around. Uh, variegated pink lemon is actually a Eureka lemon, but it has lycopene in it, which gives it that pink color. Now the limes, there's only one actual true lime here and that's the bear's lime. It's also called the Tahitian or Persian lime. They're large seedless fruit. Um, the trees are vigorous and they're spreading and they're nearly thornless, which is nice. They do not tolerate cold well, so you'll have to keep that in mind, but they are good for growing indoors. Rainpier lime is also called the mandarin lime. And it's actually not a lime, but a hybrid of a mandarin orange and a citron. They're very acidic, which is why they could replace a lime. And they're also good for growing inside. The last is the kefir lime. Uh, it's not a lime, but a papeda. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, or a Thai lime. They're grown pi primarily for their leaves. The fruit has a lot of seeds and the juice is really sour. So a lot of people don't even use the fruit. Uh, they are good for growing inside. As far as oranges go, the Satsuma mandarin orange is a good one. It's the most common in the United States. It's seedless, cold hardy, vigorous grower, and it can ripen as early as October. The Washington navel orange is seedless and it's easy to peel. It's the gold standard of oranges, uh, but it does need heat to sweeten. So you'll have to consider that. Blood orange, Moro, it's the most popular kind of blood orange and it ripens the earliest of all the blood oranges. It has a, the lowest seed count. It's the darkest in color, except when it grows in the coastal areas. Uh, Taroko is very similar. It's considered to have the best flavor of blood oranges. It's very popular in Europe and slightly larger than the Moro, has few seeds and little or no reddish color on the rind especially in coastal areas. So it looks like it does need heat to get that color. Uh, I did find one grapefruit that does well in a container, the flame grapefruit. It's a medium sized fruit, very juicy with rich color and few to no seeds. And the fruit will hold on the tree for months, making it an excellent uh, container plant. Now kumquats, they are they're very small trees and they're very popular in decorative gardens because they're beautiful. Okay, they're small seeded fruit, uh, sour flesh and juice, and they have a sweet rind. Uh, it can be eaten whole. They are often enjoyed candied or in marmalade. Now I said we were gonna talk about commercially grafted trees. And before I do that, I wanna talk about two terms. We're gonna talk about the scion. Um, if you look at the picture on the right, you'll see these two. The scion, a shoot or a twig from a previous year's growth of a desired variety. So they clip that off of the desired variety of tree 
It should have two to four buds on it from which leaves and blossoms will grow. And then the rootstock is a variety of citrus um, that scions are grafted onto. And the rootstocks provide qualities that benefit the variety that we want to grow. So they can um, help with disease tolerance, cold hardiness, soil adaptation, and to a certain degree, size. Uh, they can be grown as citrus trees themselves, the rootstock, but the fruit is typically bitter or very pithy, so they're not desirable to many home growers. Now you'll notice in the picture that they take the rootstock, it is grown to, uh, you know, a few feet tall, and then the top of the rootstock is clipped off, and that scion from the desired variety that you want to grow is grafted onto the rootstock. Now you'll notice that the graft union uh, can differ on every tree that you buy. Uh, on the left, you can see the rootstock has been grafted kind of uh, like three, three inches above the soil line. And then in the middle picture, that graft union um, is just a couple inches off the soil. So it's really, really close. And then in the last picture, it is further up, like six to eight inches up. So you'll have to keep that in mind because you do not want to uh, bury the graft union when you plant your trees. So you'll have to keep that in mind. Now, as far as selecting a tree, you always want to buy your citrus trees from a local reputable nursery. The trees will have tags sharing where the tree was acquired and it will give you basic information on planting and care. You're going to look for dwarf or semi-dwarf varieties. It will keep the tree small for you, so it's easy to maintain, and it will do really well in a pot and a container of any size. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, we're going to look, um, you're always going to be looking for a suitable variety for your microclimate. Uh, we're going to look at sunset zones, and this will usually be on the tag of the tree that you're purchasing. It's considered the standard gardening reference in the West for climate to know whether or not a plant will do, where, do well where you live. So it will consider winter minimum temperatures, summer highs, lengths of growing seasons, the humidity in your area, the rainfall patterns where you live. And in the middle picture, you'll see the Bay, Bay Area sunset zones. Um, you can look this up online. It's very beneficial. Um, it's numbered. Um, it looks like about 14 to 17 in the Bay Area. Um, and when you buy the tree, if you look at the labels that they have in the area, they will often have the sunset zones where this tree will do well. And I've highlighted it with the little orange arrows there. So you can kind of see uh, at the nursery that I went to. So keep your eye on that. Um, it's also great to just ask your neighbor. If you see a neighbor has a lemon tree, say, oh, Tell me about your lemon tree, how's it doing? Um, and then once you get to the nursery, you can you know, tell them where you live, tell them your son's at zone and they should be able to help you if you have any questions. Now, before you purchase the tree, you should inspect the trees carefully. Um, you wanna choose a healthy plant. You're gonna be looking, um, you're gonna look at the leaves. They should be shining green. There should be no pest damage. You can even look underneath them. There shouldn't be any blemishes or nicks on the bark of the trunk or the branches. And there shouldn't be any fruit on the tree. And if there is, when you purchase it, you should cut it off immediately before you plant it. It just will help all the energy of growing go into the root system. Um, you're gonna wanna look for that smooth graft union. So you know that it's, it's transporting all those nutrients in the water right up to the canopy of the tree. And also before you purchase the tree, you should lift up the pot if you can and look and see whether or not there are roots coming out of the bottom of it. Um, if the roots are coming out of the bottom of the, of the holes, it's um, a sign that it's root bound and that the roots have started growing around the root ball and will have a difficult time finding their way. If you put them in soil, it'll have a harder time growing. So when you lift it up, there shouldn't be any roots sticking out of the bottom. Um, I forgot to take a picture. So you can see that my root uh, system is looking very good. There's no circling of the roots. Now, as far as planting the tree, you're gonna need a healthy citrus tree. 
uh, pot of your choice. Uh, there are some guidelines to that and we'll go through that in a little bit. And then you're going to need some soil and we'll talk about that too. And the best time of year to plant citrus is in the spring after the danger of, of frost has passed. Trees planted in the spring will have more time to grow and will withstand cold weather for their first winter better than trees that are planted later in the year. Early planting is especially desirable inland um, where the summers are really, really hot because the, hot can't, the heat can damage trees that are not well established. We'll talk about that in a bit too. You're gonna find a place in your garden or on your patio or deck uh, that gets at least six hours of sunlight and it's protected from strong winds and then you're ready to go. So the pot selection, you can plant them in any 16 to 24 inch pot with great drainage. Most potted citrus die because they're overwatered. Um, you might have to add more holes if the pot you have doesn't have enough. Um, it should be large enough to accommodate several inches of root growth around the original root ball. Um, the darker the color of the pot, the more likely that it will get really hot in the summertime sun and can damage the root system on really hot days. Now, terracotta pots work. They are very porous, so you'll have to keep an eye on moisture levels. They'll dry out quicker than other, other containers, but a half barrel will do really well. Like I said, the terracotta pot, uh, plastic, stone, and glazed ceramics. So choose what you want to have in your garden and um, plan accordingly. Soil selection, um, you can, there are many varieties. I mean, you're gonna go and you should look for one that is a palm, tropical and citrus um, soil. There are other just plain potting soil will work as well. Um, the one thing you don't wanna do when you're planting is add any fertilizer at this point. You'll do that later on when the tree is more well-established. So just find the soil of your choice. Um, you do not want to use soil from your garden, uh, from, the, from your yard. That will, the tree will not do well in a container in that soil. All right, the first thing you're going to do is add potting soil to the container. I'm leaving enough room to hold the root ball. You can add some mesh at the bottom of the pot to stop the soil from draining before you add the soil. But before you add the soil, don't add pebbles or gravel to the bottom of the pot. That is a common thing people say, but it's not good for the tree. So do not add pebbles or gravel to the bottom of the pot. You're gonna add that soil. I put the whole pot in there with the tree. And then I checked the height to see how it's lining up. So I am not burying the very top of the root ball. And then you're going to, when you feel like you have it centered and you have it at the right height, you are going to hold the trunk at the base and gently pull it out of that black plastic. Um, if you cannot get it to come out by pulling gently, you can gently slice the pot on one side to loosen it, but try not to disturb that root ball. And then you're going to remove the whole tree with the root ball and you're gonna place it in the center of the pot and check that soil line once again. The top of the root ball should sit about an inch above the soil line. And you should also leave about two inches between that soil line and the rim of the pot for watering. And remember, don't bury the grafting union. The tree that I have there would be very hard to do that. But and since you're having to put the soil line an inch below the top of the root ball, you should be okay, but just keep that in mind. Now you're gonna to continue to step back and make sure that tree is centered and sturdy. And you're gonna add soil till it's an inch below the top of the root ball. Um, you should remove the stake. Trees need to sway freely in the wind in order to grow stronger trunks. And if it does, if it's a really windy area, you might want to let it sit for, you know, a little while till it's established, but they do recommend that you remove that stake immediately. And you're going to check the levels the next day and you should, um, the, the next day when I went out, it was about an inch lower than when I planted it. Um, because I watered it immediately after I had it planted, which you should do, you should water it really well. And then the next day, come back and check those levels, add more soil if necessary, making sure to keep that root ball, the very top of it an inch above the soil line. And then you can add mulch, straw, dried lawn clippings, small wood chips. Um, 
You could add shredded paper or cardboard or compost. Now you're going to have to consider two to three years in, you're either going to need to replace the soil and refreshen the soil in that pot, or you're going to need to pot up. Uh, you can select a container one size larger than the container it's currently in. For example, if you put it in a five gallon pot, uh, you'd want to move up to a seven gallon pot or in a seven gallon, you might move up to a 15 gallon pot. Um, I found a, a help desk. It's, it's part of um, Master Gardeners. People can email and ask questions and then get a response to help them with their gardening. And someone asked, asked a question about potting up. And so the help desk, I will have a link um, below the YouTube video that will help you um, step by step instruction. She did a great job of, of guiding people through that. So you can uh, look to that when it's time for you to pot up. Now you also need to think about protecting young tree trunks from sunburn. The optimum temperature range for citrus, citrus growth falls between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit and citrus growth stalls at 100 and the fruit won't ripen. But the thing you want to be concerned about most is that because it's a young tree and there's not a lot of leaf growth, the sun's heat can damage the bark of young trees if not shaded by that foliage. So to protect from sunburn, you can paint the trunk with whitewash um, or a white flat, not enamel interior latex paint that's mixed with an equal amount of water. And then you paint that on the trunk and it will keep the trunk from getting sunburned. All right, as far as watering goes, um, there are many options for watering pots and containers. Uh, remember that you're watering the soil and not the plant. Um, when you first plant it, you are focusing the watering on that root ball because it's very contained. But as it grows out, you're gonna wanna make sure that the water is reaching all the area of the, the soil and getting to the roots that have spread out. Um, some people use soaker hoses. Um, I've got pictures of a variety of kinds. Drip emitters work very well. Just make sure that you have multiple in there so it's watering all of that soil. Water hoses and cans can also work. You want to water deeply and less frequently. Um, Overwatering is a common mistake with many uh, potted plants and plants and containers. And it also washes out nutrients from the root zone. So there's a couple of things. If your wilted tree um, doesn't perk up um, after you water it because the top of the soil looks dry, so you water it and it doesn't perk up, you might want to check lower down uh, in the pot, the, the soil there. You could use a water meter that are pretty easy to find at nurseries um, to see that you don't have a lot of water that's sitting at the root because um, they don't like wet feet, I think it's called. Um, and so you shouldn't water it again if it's already having a difficult time with that. Um, should continue to check your potted citrus in the winter just because it's raining doesn't mean it's getting what it needs and uh, avoid getting the trunk of the tree wet as well. Now training, uh, pruning and training, the citrus don't need much pruning, not like the other fruit trees, peaches and apricots and plums and things. Late spring is the best time to prune. Always prune off dead or broken branches. You also wanna prune off suckers. Um, if you look at the bottom of the picture on the left, you can see that the suckers are growing from the rootstock and they're growing from the root system as well. Um, you also want to cut water sprouts, which is further on the left-hand side of this picture. Water sprouts go straight up. They vigorously grow from branches. Um, they usually do that in the spring and it's due to coming out of its dormant state. And they'll also do that under stressful conditions such as losing a big limb or severe pruning or drought. Now, before you do any pruning, you want to clean your tools, your clippers with soapy water, and then you're going to disinfect it with a solution that is one part bleach and 10 parts water. And a lot of the sprayer, the little spray things that you can get at a store will have the measurement on there for you. So look for that. Um, as the tree matures, you'll have to tend to some pruning to keep the tree healthy and the shape that you desire. 
Here are some examples of ways you can train your tree. You can keep that canopy like an umbrella, cut it in a way that's pleasing to you. Um, you can espalier, which is when you put wires up against um, a wall, or they can be freestanding as well, and you train the branches to grow sideways out. Um, they can also be trained to go over a pergola of some sort, which can be really lovely. Fertilizing, they are heavy feeders. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are very important, and there are other nutrients like magnesium and iron. Um, it's important for fruit production. Nutrient deficiencies reduce yields, and they'll affect the size, the color, and the sweetness, and the peel of the fruit. You can use any good slow release fertilizer specifically created for citrus that will have all those um, micronutrients that you need to. They're gonna feed during the growing season, which is late February through early September. You don't wanna fertilize after September because it will encourage growth just before it starts to get cold and you don't want that new growth to be exposed to that. Follow the directions on the back of the packaging. You should never do more than is suggested. You can apply over the entire root area and work it lightly into the soil, avoid getting it too close to the trunk and then water well after you apply. Um, using slow release fertilizer will avoid these deficiencies, but nitrogen can be a problem. As you can see in the picture, the leaves yellow. Iron deficiency, gets this, uh, the veins are darker, but in between the veins are lighter. Um, magnesium deficiency is that um, V shape of the yellowing of the leaf and then potassium deficiency, the yellowish leaves and the edges are bent downward. These symptoms can be found and um, easily controlled if you're using slow release fertilizer. Sometimes in the winter, because the soil is so wet, the tree will have trouble taking up those um, nitrogen and things. And so um, you might see that, but it's nothing to worry about and it will usually go away in the spring. We're going to talk about pests and diseases. Now we're going to start with the aphid, white fly, and the scale. They all damage leaves. And in case of the scale, the branches, um, they can be dislodged with a forceful spray of water. Um, so that's more difficult with the scale. In that case, you might want to remove the infected branch. All three have many natural predators. Um, so it's best not to spray with insecticides because they will also kill those beneficial insects. They suck, all three of these insects suck sap from the leaves and the branches, and then they create a honeydew, which will attract ants. So keeping ants off the trees will actually help beneficial insects come in and um, take out the aphids, white flies, and scale. Now the Argentine ants, they feed on the honeydew that sap sucking insects produce. Boric acid traps can work to keep them um, out of your trees. Ants can also be prevented from climbing up a citrus tree by applying a barrier like Tanglefoot. Um, we don't endorse that brand specifically. Uh, any brand of sticky insect repellent would do. You do not want to put it directly on the bark because it can damage the bark. You first want to wrap a strip of heavy paper or other protective uh, material. I've used duct tape um, around the trunk and then apply the Tanglefoot to the outside surface. Uh, periodically, you're going to check it to make sure it's still sticky and refresh it when needed. Um, in order for the barrier to work and to be effective, the branches on the outside of the tree must be pruned so they don't touch the ground or other structures. So the ants can no longer get to the source of honeydew because they're blocked by that sticky um, repellent. Now mites, spider mites live in colonies. Uh, you'll notice dense webbing. It can cover the leaves and the twigs and the fruit. It's usually most severe in hot, dry, dusty conditions and on water stressed plants. They have many predators, natural enemies. So it's best not to use insecticides to kill them because you'll also kill the natural enemies. Um, watering the plant, spraying the plant down with water sufficiently um, will get rid of the dusty conditions and the mites uh, won't, won't, won't live their best life there. So it's a good idea that occasionally if you see it, uh, the webbing, you just spray the tree. And also keeping your plants well watered uh, during drought stress will help um, the mites from taking hold. Uh, you'll notice in drought 
the drought stress will invite the, the mites. Um, like I said, you should apply spray water if you see them and that might keep them at bay, but mostly you'll be helped out by natural predators. Slugs and snails, um, they both feed on foliage and fruit. Copper band can be applied to the room of your container. You should keep them out. You can also use sluggo. The larvae of the citrus leaf miner, they feed inside developing leaves and leave a whitish trail, as you can see in the right hand picture. Once the leaves harden, the pest will not be able to mine the leaves, but you should leave them on there because they'll continue to help feed the plant. Um, you're going to want to remove water sprouts and suckers because uh, those new leaves will attract the leaf, citrus leaf miner. And you want to encourage beneficial insects and natural predators. They're very helpful. Avoid using insecticides like before. Now the big one is the Asian citrus psyllid. Um, it's an insect that can spread Huanglong Bing, which is a disease. It spreads it from tree to tree as it flies about and feeds. Um, HLB, Huanglong Bing, is the disease that will kill a citrus tree in as little as five years. The Asian citrus psyllid doesn't kill the tree itself, it just carries the disease from one tree to another when it feeds. There is no cure or effective control method. You should check your trees monthly and from spring to fall. Um, the adults the, on the left hand side, the adults are about the size of an aphid uh, with brownish mottled wings and they feed with their head down and their tail in the air and they have red eyes as well. The nymphs are tiny and yellowish and excrete a white waxy tubule. So you should look for those things. Um, always purchase trees from a local reputable nursery to avoid bringing uh, the insect or the disease into your yard, and you should support inspections and treatments of your citrus trees by the county or state officials should that arise. If you think your tree has the disease, um, you'll, the disease can be noticed. It's kind of tricky because it looks like other kinds of nutrient deficiencies as well, but the leaves will be mottled yellow. Um, and the oranges will never really truly, um, it's called greening disease as well because it stays really green and they'll be bitter and they don't taste good and they fall off really easily. Um, so if you see that or you're concerned at all, or if you find the Asian citrus psyllid on the tree, um, you can contact the California Department of Food and Agricultural Exotic Pest Hotline. And I have put that there on the, on the slide, but it will also be, you can find it, um, below the, in the links below the video. For more information about pests, um, you can go to our um, pest notes. Um, if there's a whole library of them, you can go for most of the insects you might be finding in your garden. It will give you a ton of important information and really quick snippets, which is a great resource to have. One moment. Um, when I purchased um, my most recent citrus tree, there was this blue strip reminding buyers that citrus trees purchased in the nursery need to stay in a certain quarantine zone for the Asian citrus psyllid. So um, the map in the middle shows the pink area is where our quarantine zone two is. So you should not take it outside of that. So something purchased close to us in Contra Costa County shouldn't be taken into Napa. Um, if you're concerned about that, you should research that online. And to control the spread, the state of California now requires all citrus growers to treat their citrus trees with a neonic, which is a pesticide. And it's connected to the killing of honeybees and other important pollinators, but it's such uh, Asian citrus psyllid is such a problem. They've put this notice uh, to let you know your tree has been treated. As far as um, tolerating frost and protecting them from frost, they vary in their amount of cold they can tolerate. Most need protection if the temperatures reach 32 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Um, a quick short-lived plunge in temperature won't be as damaging as a prolonged exposure to cold. So if you hear that a cold front's coming, you need to get ready. You can water all of your garden plants thoroughly before the freeze. Since freezing soil will pull moisture from the plant, you wanna make sure there's a lot of moisture there. You can put old fashioned Keep producing holiday lights on your trees. You can wrap them around. It will keep the tree warm. Be careful that the hot bulbs don't touch leaves because there could be some scorching. 
You can use frost covered blankets and old sheets and drape it over your tree. If you don't want to leave it on there for too long, you know, protect it from it. Um, but don't block the sunlight and it can be too heavy sometimes. So you'll have to keep your eye on that. And be careful if you're using a plastic cover because that does trap heat during the day and that could damage your tree as well. And if you have the space, you could overwinter all of your citrus indoors to avoid frost or create a space like the one in the middle where they've put all of their citrus trees during the winter months. I've provided a link to protecting your trees from frost um, in the notes below. Now the ability of a citrus to tolerate the cold varies, like I said before. So you have citron being the most sensitive, uh, pomelo being in the middle, and we have the kumquat being the most uh, hardy. Um, so you'll have to keep that in mind, depending on where you live and how much production you'll need to provide. And finally, harvesting. When you'll harvest depends on the variety. They usually ripen eight to 16 months after the bloom. That information is usually on a tag at the nursery, so you can kind of see when you can expect fruit. They um, have a harvest season of two to six months, like I said before, and they only ripen on the tree. The best way to know if they're done is to eat one. Remove them through a quick twist or pull and pull it, or you can cut it with shears. Only pick which you'll use at the time, and it's best to store them on the tree. Refrigerated citrus will stay good for two to six weeks in a refrigerator. Here are some of the links that um, I've mentioned before, and they will be below the, the video. Um, you can access uh, Master Gardeners all year long. You can visit our website uh, for upcoming events and webinars, helpful gardening information, and help desk hours. Um, you can access that integrated pest management um, site that I showed you before. You can also contact the help desk if you would like to. They're only doing it through email right now. If you do have a question for them, you can provide your name, your phone number, and the city and a description of the problem. The photographs would be very helpful if possible. And you can visit us on social media to stay up to date with what we're doing. You can visit us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and if you go on YouTube, tube, you can search Master Gardener where you found this video. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Happy gardening.